Well, hello, Phil Giuliani here again. The last recording of 2020. Today's actually December 31st, 2020. And what a year it's been. You've been hearing a lot about that on TV. You've been hearing a lot about that in media and social media and everywhere. Because this has been a year pretty much unlike any other one. And we, of course, have to start with the pandemic. And for those of you who might have watched some of the YouTubes I did on some uh, thoughts of coronavirus, I think there were seven or eight parts of it. Um, you can go back and check them out on this channel. But if, um, if not, to summarize, my feeling, and this is my personal feeling, many people don't agree and some people do, and this is definitely the sign of judgment that's here. Judgment is definitely here, and every day that goes by where we hear optimistic news about the pandemic, which then seems to be less optimistic as time goes on, makes me think even more seriously about that. And in the last couple of days, we've heard about a different strain of the virus, which may or may not be covered by the vaccine, which is upcoming. So that will be another story. But I feel that, as I say, we're on the trajectory to the second coming. We're in the midst of judgment, and probably over the next few months to a year, this will probably get better for a while before the next thing comes. And I jokingly tell people, well, it's nothing to joke about, but I laughingly tell people that in a couple of years or maybe next year, we'll look back on COVID as the good old days because there is no sign in the culture that any kind of repentance is underway or even being considered. In fact, we've seen the great falling away of the Christian churches, all the great denominations. Lastly, we've seen recently the changes in Roman Catholicism, which has always been a stalwart of for 2,000 years, has now been becoming more and more like the world with ambiguous teaching, scandal, siding with the secular press, the secular media, becoming, quote, tolerant, unquote, of everything that is going on. Um, attendance at all churches has fallen to what would have been considered unbelievable even 25 years ago, maybe 15 years ago. Church leaders who remain mute, and I can't emphasize that enough, so I usually say capital M, capital U, capital T, capital E, on the moral issues of the day. And we know in the book of Revelation that as judgments come, and we're not going to interpret the book, this is not about that, there's all different scenarios that are possible, and that's fine. But if you recall, as you read through the book, there's judgments that come, but there is no repentance. And people harden their hearts even more and shake their fist at God and say, well, we are not going to do that. So there is no repentance. And then the next more serious judgment comes. And I think what we've seen over the past summer, and especially since the time of um, the American election, and this is not a political video, but people have embraced the evils which have brought this on in the first place. And the main evils that we have in this country, of course, are abortion, the murder of the unborn, which has been going on and has now reached 63 million since 1973. And you don't hear anyone in the church is talking about this anymore. In fact, people say, well, this is just one issue. Uh, people refer to it as, oh, well, that's a political issue. And people in the church don't want to talk about it. But one of the things that the scripture tells us that um, God hates is the shedding of innocent blood. Well, there is no more innocent blood than the blood of the unborn. And for those of you and I who have worked in the pro-life ministries for many, many years, it's almost gone away now, the idea that we can change this. And we got some new Supreme Court justices, and, you know, that's good. And in the old days, we thought, well, if we had a pro-life president, it would be good. Well, we do. 
if we had a few more senators, a few more representatives, well, bottom line is that people's hearts have not been changed. It's not a political issue. People's hearts have not been changed. And there is open rebellion. And the church has been mute about this. And this past election that we had here in America has cemented that. This will continue. This will be promoted. Um, Vice Pre uh, President-elect Biden, who identifies himself as a Roman Catholic, is now bragging about how he's going to go after the little sisters of the poor and make sure they pay for contraception and abortion. This is what we're up against. Um, in Argentina, just a few days ago, the first abortion law ever passed took effect. And there were literally people dancing in the streets, dancing in celebration and singing. Same thing happened in Ireland about, I think, a year and a half ago. People went into the streets to celebrate and to sing. And at the time, it kind of reminded me of the golden calf. Here it is. Here's the issue. Here it is. This is the ultimate rebellion. But isn't this good? Because this is what we want right now. Because we can't trust God to do anything for us. And so here we are, not we, but those people there, celebrating and, and singing and dancing because now they have the right to murder the unborn. And we wonder why we have COVID, and we wonder why we can't control it, and we wonder why it's getting worse. Next, same-sex marriage. Homosexuality, along with shedding of innocent blood, is considered an abomination. In the Torah, it points out that it defiles the land. Well, now we have same-sex marriage, which has been legalized. We have churches who are ordaining, practicing homosexual, practicing homosexual people, men and women, and who are now beginning to do marriage rights. And that includes our Catholic new president, who has officiated in a same-sex wedding ceremony. So the divine institution of marriage, which began in the Garden of Eden, which is between one man and one woman, and you could see the, the, how this is preserved all the way through the scriptures. And Jesus quotes that in the beginning, God created the male and female, and the man leaves his mother and father and clings to his wife, and they become one flesh. Well, this has now been thrown out the window as the destruction of the family accelerates. And we wonder why we have COVID and why we can't control it. Next, we have the gender issues. I don't even know what to call them. But like I like to tell people, I'm so old-fashioned, I still believe there's two genders. You're either male or you're female. Because in the book of Genesis, it says God created them male and female. Jesus quotes this verse in his ministry it says, in the beginning, God created them male and female. So here we are, and we wonder why there's COVID. So now you can transition from one gender to the other. You can say that I'm one of, I'm a member of 58 different genders, whatever you happen to be, and that your gender can be fluid. And we wonder why we have COVID. In general, the churches, the Christian church has done nothing, not a thing, to combat this in a moral, spiritual way. In fact, they've gone along with it because now they're afraid of what people are going to say. In the ancient world, we had, well, not just ancient world because it's happening currently as well. We've had martyrs who have given their lives because they would not go against the faith. Now we have church leaders gra gladly going against the faith in order to be more like the world. And we wonder why we have COVID. And so here we are. The gospel has been hijacked, has been taken over by environmentalists, by Mother Earth worshiping people who claim that COVID is a result of the earth kind of paying us back for how we've treated her. You know, there's this Mother Earth concept which is going on now, which is one of the oldest forms of paganism. 
We've pushed God to the horizon and then off the horizon. Our tolerance has led to not accepting Jesus or his message of salvation in any way whatsoever. In any way whatsoever. In fact, he is the only subject that cannot be talked about in our culture. And we wonder why we have COVID. This will not go on forever. This humanism, this city of man, this Babel philosophy, it all goes back to the Tower of Babel, will not be tolerated by God forever. And we're seeing the result of that. Yes, there have always been epidemics of things. There have always been pandemics of things. Infectious diseases always, despite what the media tells you about your cholesterol and every little thing that has to be addressed now in medicine, infectious disease is what has always killed people, yes. But now there are so many other things in play, so many other factors that now have to be considered in light of Scripture that we can't just say this is a time like any other time. And now that we have world leaders talking about one world government, about nations giving up their sovereignty, we have to look at this very seriously and understand the signs of the time. You know, Jesus said, you have to understand the signs of the time, and he compared it to the weather. He said, when you see clouds in the west, you say, it's going to rain, and it does. When you feel the wind coming from the south, you say, it's going to be hot, and it is. And he says, why do you understand the signs of the earth and sky, but don't understand the signs of the time? This has to be understood. There's a remnant of people now that are staying on the scripture as their foundation, as Jesus and his sacrifice on the cross as the only way of salvation, and that God's moral laws have to be upheld by the society. And as we close this year, and it's going to be New Year's in just a few hours, we're going into 21, to 2021, and there's people on the television going, oh, it's so good to get rid of this year, as if once it strikes midnight tonight, everything is going to be fine. Well, 2021 is probably going to be a much more difficult year. In fact, I'm convinced it's going to be a much more difficult year. And so please, talk to your friends, talk to your pastors, talk to your priests. Organize people into remnants, into home churches, into study groups, whatever you think has to be done in order to spread the gospel because the time is really running short. So from Gift of Grace Ministries and from One and Messiah, I want to wish you a happy new year. And we know that because we have the light of Christ in us, we have the light of the Messiah in us, even though things are difficult, we know that we walk in the light, and we know that the light of the Spirit illuminates our way. So we'll be back soon with some new recordings, some new podcasts, and have an awesome New Year's.